Today, we're making bolognese sauce. So if you like Italian food, and you love meat sauce and pasta, stay tuned because this recipe is up next. First thing you want to do is slice an onion. Then you want to chop it up into small pieces. Chop some carrot, and chop some celery as well. Now we have our sofrito. And for minced meat, I have beef, lamb, and pork Italian sausage. Now over on the stove, I have a large pot. I'm going to turn the heat up to medium high and add enough olive oil to coat the entire bottom of this pot. Then add my veggies. Once I've spread this out evenly, I'm going to hit it with a little bit of kosher salt and pepper. Then stir this in real good, and I'm going to saute this until the onions are translucent. Now here, I've got a little bit of my homemade red wine. I'm going to add just a little bit to the pot. Then spend just a couple of minutes stirring until the alcohol is burned off and evaporated. Now we're ready for our minced meat, so we'll add the beef the Italian sausage, and the lamb. Just spend a minute or so breaking it all up, getting it mixed up until it's pretty even like this. Now all we have to do is brown the meat all the way through. And this isn't rocket science, just keep it steady and stirring till you lose the pink color in the meat. Now add a little bit more red wine, now here's a nifty tool to break those bigger pieces up into smaller pieces. Once that's done, you can give it one last stir. So now we're ready for our sauce. Now we're going to start by adding tomato sauce. But we also need some diced tomatoes. And to make both of those a little more bold, we're going to need some tomato paste. Now this recipe takes several hours to cook, so one of the things you want to do is fill that can up with a little bit of warm water and get the rest of that paste off your spoon and add that to the pot. Of course you don't want a watered down bolognese, but what's going to happen is reduction's going to take over and boil out all that water and eventually leave us with a really thick bolognese sauce. And once you bring it to a boil, you can go ahead and turn the heat down to a simmer and wait for about an hour. Now let's talk about pasta. Here I've got a bag of tagliatelle and another bag of pappardelle, which are both a wider noodle. If you take a good look at both of these nests, the one on the right, the tagliatelle, is a lot like fettuccine. The one on the left is a lot like a Chinese noodle called knife pear. But you can use penne or rigatoni as well. Never spaghetti. Now it's been about an hour here. I'm just going to stir it off the bottom, make sure the meat isn't burning. But eventually, you'll see the reduction here. It's been about two hours of cooking time, but we're going to add some more water. And I'm going to continue cooking this sauce until all of that meat gets soft and tender. Which will only take about another hour or so, and then it'll look something like this. Almost like thick chili. And our last ingredient is going to be milk. And as you stir this in, you'll notice the sauce will get real creamy. Now it's time to sneak in there for a taste test. Mmm, that's hot. <laughs> Not going to lie, but we need a little salt and pepper in there. And you want to just salt and pepper to your taste. You really don't need any other herbs and seasoning because some of that's already in the Italian sausage. Let's go ahead and give it all one last stir because now we got to make our pasta. And over here in the corner, I've got some boiling water rolling. And I'm going to add several nests of pappardelle noodles. And on average, those take about 8 to 10 minutes to cook. And as you can see here, the consistency on our bolognese sauce is perfect. So let me show you one way I like to do this here. 
Just take a big old ladle of this bolognese sauce, drop it in the bottom of the bowl, then I'll grab these tongs and pinch out the noodles. We'll add that right over the top of this bolognese sauce here. And I am sharing this dish with my wife, so I'm using quite a bit of noodles. Now one more scoop of bolognese sauce right over the top. Now just mix that with the tongs. Now if you were a restaurant or you've got leftovers and you want to reheat this the next day, you can just do this in a skillet the same way I did in the bowl on the stove. It only takes a couple of minutes and it will taste just as fresh. Now it's time to plate. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. But don't forget that Parmesan cheese. I like a lot. And there you have it. Bolognese sauce right here in the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen. Thank you for watching and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients.